Hello and good evening from Germany. This is Jonathan Quill Higgins the third. Uh, I'm live here on uh, Thursday evening, uh, nine o'clock in, in the evening. And um, I'm a little bit exhausted. Uh, also, um, crazy um, blown away uh, by something that uh, that just happened. Uh, I didn't have the time at all to prepare something, so this is truly out of the cuff. I hope that Tanzil uh, may join me a little bit. So let me tell you what, what just happened. Um, so Watch Nicholas is at the moment in Geneva. Um, I was uh, live streaming with him in the last seven hours. Uh, that is my excuse for not preparing really well. Um, watch uh, Nicholas try to, um, to hop on. Uh, by the way, I should I should leave uh, Watch Nicholas uh, a message that that I've just started. Oh, maybe maybe he gets it. Doesn't really matter. So yeah, uh, Nick is um, is in Geneva. He tried to uh, to go to Watches and Wonders, uh, but Watches and Wonders at the moment is still uh, only available for um, for professionals. I think the public days are open on Saturday. Sunday and Monday, um, so he couldn't uh, go in, into the, the exhibition. Then he was uh, basically guns are streaming around um, Geneva, uh, beautiful places. He tried to get an appointment with Breguet for the Guillochage um, um, uh, dial presentation. It seems that, that they're, they're not doing it anymore. Not sure if that is only for the Geneva Watchers and Wonders uh, time or uh, if they uh, they terminally uh, stopped doing those, which would be a shame because it just gives uh, such a such a credit to the craft of uh, of Guillochage, um, and I think it's it's totally worth uh, visiting that. Uh, so um, he then visited uh, uh, the the old town of Geneva, uh, dropped by Recep Recepi, and hopefully he will get a, an appointment there. Uh, we are not sure at the moment uh, about that. He went back to town. Uh, we were trying to find a Tudor boutique, and uh, just by sheer accident, he stumbled across an exhibition of uh, independent watchmakers. It's not the uh, the official AHCI uh, event. It is a smaller event, and uh, he was stumbling in uh, the booth of Bernhard Lederer. Um, people who are really watching uh, the show know um, uh, about my my passion for Bernhard Lederer uh, and his watches and I'm just trying to show you the first one uh, that uh, that he made and I think since since the old Swiss and John show days I've been a fan of uh, the Lederer watch uh, Bernhard Lederer what he does uh, it is called CIC uh, central impulse chronometer um, that is not what what is really fascinating about this watch. It's all about the movement. I'm going to show it to you here. The movement is absolutely mind blowing for for everybody who who has a love for uh, for for fancy movements. Um, additionally, uh, what he does is he has that crazy exhibition case back in in sapphire crystal, but it's not a flat crystal. It is an extremely domed crystal. Not sure if there is a picture out there that shows it um, maybe not so um the the breaking news uh, for for this year um is that he slimmed down this uh, particular watch from 44 millimeters into 39 millimeters and i think i've been covering that uh, a week ago um because i think it's a it's a very big process uh, progress uh, making his watches wearable more wearable than they've been that is a new one, 39 millimeters. He shrunk virtually everything, with the exception of the escapement wheels. Here you can see, uh, uh, here you can get a, a glance of the exhibition case back, which is extremely domed, uh, extreme curvature, and um, the the watch is just a feast for the eyes. So, Nick went went there. Uh, uh, he's uh, exhibiting at the. Um, uh, Hotel Beau Rivage. Uh, there, uh, there are a couple of independents, and Bernhard Leder is one of them. I told Nick uh, to go there um, to wait, and uh, Nick was waiting all uh, waiting. I think almost an hour um, to get an appointment. 
So uh, we were greeted by his wife, I think. Um, he was busy and I uh, explained to his wife that we have a live stream and 35 people from all over the world are watching and uh, that we had some questions about the watches and if he could, if she could uh, present us the watches. And as soon as she found out that there are 35 people watching and that that shows you what what nature those people are. Uh, so as soon as she learned there are 35 people behind that phone that Nick held, she said, well, if there are 35 people uh, waiting for us, uh, I think we should uh, we should wait until Mr. Lederer is available. And a couple of minutes later, he was available and Mr. Lederer, Lederer was 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 humble and gracious uh, to reply for over an hour uh, to all the stupid questions that we had. Um, he's a fantastic explainer um, for the people who don't know Lederer that uh, that uh, dual impulse or central impulse chronometer uh, that he made is a concept uh, invented by Abraham Louis Breguet. Uh, Lederer uh, refined it and he made it possible for wrist watches. Um, Breguet at the end um, failed with the concept and Lederer made it working. And um, this is an outstanding watch from um, from the perspective of horology, but also just a visual uh, sight. Um, totally, uh, totally mind blowing. Uh, like I said, Swiss and I, we've been raving about this wa uh, particular watch for uh, for three years now. Now, of course, at the end of the day, uh, I told uh, Lederer uh, what, what I'm doing and I kindly invited him to participate on the show. He said uh, when he was a, a student, he didn't he didn't stop asking questions and he appreciated everyone who who took the time uh, to reply to his question. So um, he's happy to to join us uh, one day here on, on the show and I'm happy to uh, to host him here and to ask some question and present his incredible invention. Uh, nobody else can can explain it that well just like he can uh, to be honest in, in all honesty i still have questions i still don't 100 percent understand how his invention works what i know is uh, that his movement is is split into two parts uh, so you can see one central uh, i'm trying to make it a little bit bigger so you you can see here one mainspring barrel you can see another mainspring barrel here on the top so you can see here a remontoir, which uh, uh, which delivers a constant force. You can see the second remontoir on top. Um, the watch has also two escapement wheels. One is here, and one should be a little bit uh, on uh, above here. Uh, that is the second escapement wheel. Uh, there is one balance wheel, and um, Mr. Lederer was talking about a kind of metronome that swings in between. I found a video that that illustrates a little bit um, what this is all about, and I'm trying to to show you that and to give you an idea how complex and how genius that is. Not sure uh, if you can understand it at the first time. I couldn't, uh, but I was riveted by an interview um, uh, that that I saw, and uh, I watched that over and over. So I'm posting the link of that video here in the comments for everybody who wants to see it. I'm also posting the StreamYard link. Just like I said, uh, I, I haven't prepared anything. So I'm trying to show you the video about uh, that beautiful CIC or Central Impulse Chronometer um, escapement that Lederer invented. And hopefully it, it fascinates you to a degree that you want to learn more. Um, I think I'm pretty good in understanding uh, technology, uh, but it took me a while. So here we go. I'm, I'm trying to play it. So you have two escapement wheels and the, uh, the escapement wheels look like uh, the wheels of a detent because basically this is a double detent escapement, but without the detent lever. So the thing that that long thing in the middle that you can see 
that is the so-called what Lederer calls the metronome and that is swinging back and forth so tooth by tooth is released and then he has a locking mechanism in the middle that prevents slipping accidental slipping because one of the main problem with uh, detent uh, uh, escapement is that um, uh, in a certain degree um, those uh, those balance wheels are slipping and you can see also the the attention that he puts into his research because you can see on the left uh, the uh, the recordings of a high speed camera uh, of his system so he's going in, into the detail really deep and um, that's just amazing So you can see it's released uh, on top. It stopped uh, here uh, in the bottom, and in the middle there is a so-called locking mechanism uh, that prevents the slippage, which is feared by the by the detent um, escapement. That is a common problem. So keep in mind. Uh, that that kind of technology comes from marine chronometers. Uh, marine chronometers didn't have problems with shocks. So that is all marine chronometer technology. Marine chronometers have only one purpose, to deliver the time as precisely as possible, uh, because life of sailors depended on, on the accuracy of the chronometer. Because if you don't have uh, pr um, precise time, you can't navigate precisely. Uh, with the traditional um, navigation um, stuff. So yeah, St uh, Scotch Down Under says, wow, most impressive. Um, to everybody who is interested in in, uh, in having a look at that video, uh, that, that interview that I just made, I'm trying to link to Nick's show. I think Nick's show is still going and you can see that interview. I'm trying also to get that interview uh, on my channel or probably on, watch, uh, on Nicholas' channel. Um, uh, to see uh, Nick's uh, stream is now, I think, in the seventh or eighth hour. Uh, so uh, it's really long. Um, but you, will, if you scroll back, you will see when we are talking to, to real people. So let me just put that. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's the link to the video from nick um at the moment he's still running the show um and um yeah try to find it i think it's a little bit more than two hours back um you you see uh, when when people are presenting the the watches so yes so uh yeah so this is all internal stuff now uh, of course i'm going to reach out to uh, to bernard lederer um uh, about the interview and i hope uh, that he's keeping his word he was super kind, super humble, and what really touched my heart was um, where, where he, uh, his, uh, his wife said, look, uh, if 35 people are waiting here, um, we, sh we, should, uh, we should honor them and have Mr. Lederer to talk to them. Self, that is Mr. Lederer in, uh, behind his workbench. Um, Mr. Lederer is, is uh, born uh, in Germany, uh, but moved uh, then later on to Switzerland and his watches are produced in Switzerland. Okay, what else do I have? Um, second, I'm, I am live. If you want to, Gonzo. Um, so yeah, uh, so uh, uh, Nick offered to show us a little bit illuminated um, Geneva. Uh, not sure if he sees the message, if he's in the mood. Um, but I gave him the invitation. So what else happened? Uh, just like I said, um, I was um, uh, I was very short timed to present something, but I wanted to give you my thoughts on this one here. That is the uh, Lange Datograph Perpetual Tourbillon, uh, which is now available in a, in a Lumen version. Absolutely outstanding watch. Um, in a civil size, I must say. Um, let me check. Actually, I don't know 
uh, how big the new data graph is. One second. Um, monochrome watches uh, lange. Because, so lange archives. So the, the present uh, lange uh, data graph the size is 41 millimeters. That is what, when you when you don't have the chance to uh, to prepare a show. Um, so let's have a look how. So 41 is the normal one. I think that one is 41.5. Yes, 41.5. And we have Patel Philip in the background. Hello. No, 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 no. You you wrote you read oh, my name wrong. Lead stealer Higgy. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. The lead stealer himself. Shameless plug for the Elite Horology channel. Okay, okay. Before before you're spreading rumors, and mm. I think I'm I'm gonna be slammed now for being an arrogant fike, and probably I am. Um, am I really the lead stealer, or don't you think after doing that interview, if a simple call, without even announcing uh, what what I had in mind, don't you think? that if I call uh, Lederer up the next week that he probably remembers that interview and that I can get my uh, my interview partner on my show by myself. Am I really stealing the, le the leads? Uh, I mean, you're stealing leads from your own channel if I'm going to give you my opinion, but I will give you my opinion. Um, do I think Lederer, will, I don't think Lederer will ever forget you, the crazy German guy who argued with him about, who disagreed <laughs> with him about tourbillons and stuff like that over the internet. I don't think he's ever going to forget you. So yeah, look, hey, I, I do hope he does come on the show and, and does talk watches. But I think it was a great segment. And actually, Nick even said it himself. He's like, you set up that interview, which was really cool. And you led a lot of it because Nick said it himself. He wouldn't have had a lot of I mean, talk, Nick didn't even know the company. Well, exactly. You and I, we've talked about Leader on your show. So. Yeah. Right, right, well, right. not not only you and me. To, to give a Swiss credit, uh, we've been talking about Lederer for three years. Well, you finally got to meet your hero, Mr. Higgins. How was it? Yeah, but uh, come on. Um, I mean, I'm still uh, on heaven, on cloud nine. Uh, I can't believe uh, that 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 this was reality. I can't believe how humble the guy is. Yeah, you know what? It was it was just interesting to him, you know, to hear him talk about the story of traveling to London to get the the, the it's a Daniel's book, right? Not a Breguet book, mm -hmm. and um, you know, just yeah. I mean, and people were talking about the genius and you know how he's getting a lot of praise, and you know, he said it himself. He's like, if I was a genius, I'd figure out technology, and I can't figure it out, so I kind of stick to what I what I do, right? So hey, look, it was definitely a very very good interview, I would say, from a PR perspective. He came off very personable. And, you know, like what I said in the chat, you know, Higgins is like a lot of the snobbery in the Swiss, you know, in the Swiss industry or even the watch industry, that's not even say Swiss industry, but watch industry and to see a guy like that, you know, hop on, hop onto like a small last YouTube channel, spend an hour answering annoying questions from us. And yeah, like, hey, hey, hey they were not so annoying. They were factual. Said, no I drama said, uh, involved. Yes. No, I didn't say it was drama. I said it was annoying for for you to bring up the the, the Toby on. It's funny because you could see you could see his reaction, right? I, I think you should. Did you recount already this? I, I just logged in, so did you already recount that story? Because if you haven't, it's a really good story. Uh, no, I I haven't. So uh, so later uh, is a self confessed escapement specialist. So uh, I of course the the escapement is the most important part in a watch. It all falls or stands. Uh, by the quality and accuracy of the escapement. We all know that. Uh, but he he did so much research into escapements, probably like no one else. Right. And he was praising, of course, the central impulse uh, chronometer that, that he developed. And I had to ask him the question. So compared to, to what you're doing with the central impulse chronometer, uh, what is your opinion about tourbillons? Uh, and I told him I, I own a Lange Tourbillon. And uh, I told him everybody's shitting on the tourbillon uh, because it was invented for pocket watches and uh, now uh, wristwatches are worn differently. And uh, I told him that that I disagree with people. Mm. So he, he went on a long explanation and he said uh, the tourbillon actually has a problem uh, because you're carrying out uh, around uh, a lot of weight. 
so a tourbillon cage, uh, the light it is, at the end of the day, you need energy to move that tourbillon cage around, no matter how good you make it. Uh, he also said that um, if you if you're not careful uh, in constructing it, you're getting a kind of in imbalance within the tourbillon cage. So it's not really symmetrical. Um, so he said um, it is not really about uh, the, the sheer accuracy. I think he was too polite to say mine is better than a tourbillon. Right. I think that, that is what, what I read between the lines. Do, mm -hmm. do you agree on that? Well, and, and I think you just described it as a tourbillon. You didn't talk about the fusée and chain. You know, yeah. I don't even think he knew which tourbillon you were talking about. Mm. Yeah, yeah, probably yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're, well, I you're right. If you had, I think if you described the fusée and chain, you know, I think if you described that part of the movement as well, he would have understood that you're talking about accuracy, not mm -hmm. a, because maybe you're just a guy who likes tourbillons just because they're beautiful. Flashing, right? flashing yeah. around a tourbillon. You exactly, mean. exactly, exactly, <laughs> okay. right, exactly. Yeah, how little he knows about me. <laughs> right, but I mean, I would say most yeah. buyers for tourbillons aren't going to be into the technical details of it, right? So, yeah. so we have watched Nick Nose here in background. Oh. Hey, hey, Nick. Hey, sorry, it took me a minute to transfer over. How are you guys doing? What's up, Tan? No problem. We What's going are, on, Nikki baby? We're super excited uh, how how great of a person Bernhard Leder is. I thought that was a really great... I, I need to text you the... Uh, I'll, remind me, I, I'll send you the uh, the stuff when I get back. I haven't done that yet. But that was, uh, that was a really special thing, man. Hopefully when he comes on yours, you know, if he gives you that type of time again, you know, that was, uh, that was pretty special, I think. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I think I think so too. But now now people are trying uh, do, to drive us uh, away from it, each other. Higgins should pay for the for the card, and uh, Higgins is stealing the leads. Uh, yeah, uh, you you see uh, that here. Yeah, can, can I uh, yeah, I can I um, give just kind of my assessment on on leader? Um, here, I'll make uh, I'll make John, I'll make uh, Nick yeah. full screen so you can see the Gonzo mm -hmm. while he does that. So, look on our last show when we talked about Leader, you know, I, I think I went into the comment around like, why is this guy doing this, right? Like, chasing chronometric accuracy, like it, it's very, it, it's very niche, and not a lot of people buy yeah. watches for the purpose of of that, you know. And and he's he's kind of going that to that to the extreme. What I learned about him today. Jonathan was like, he's so passionate about that one area that I don't think he cares. I don't think he, he he's looking to make a big mainstream type of a sale. I think for him, it's, it's honing the excellence of an art, you know, that he, or, or, you know, technical uh, innovation that he is interested in and bringing that to the market. And that's really dictating, you know, what that watch becomes in the CIC and whatnot. So it just made a lot more sense to me around why he's doing it after hearing that interview because just reading the monochrome article and looking at the watch i'm just like man i don't get this why is somebody doing this right so that's just my take on it but it did definitely open my mind to why he's pursuing this uh, endeavor on the uh, on the cic yeah well I yeah i think um uh, i think that your title is wrong nick your, your interview with ferdinand Bertou, it was ben, bernhard lederer oh my god nick are you serious <laughs> no way Scre yo, higgy screenshot that screenshot i need that for the locks report nick now you're caught <laughs> screenshot already on the way to tan there's yes, no escape yes, yes, <laughs> of yes. that uh, so, uh, what was the question? <laughs> it wasn't a question. It was a comment, right? It was just a comment around like when we when we last spoke. Mm -hmm. I, I really was criticizing um, Leaderer in the sense of like you know he he created this watch chasing chronometric accuracy, and it, it just it, it's kind of the a, a later edition of doing the same thing, and it just was odd to me that he would do that. Because it's just not a very mainstream thing that people are looking for. It's not building a beautiful, you know, tourbillon or anything else like that, right? So, but after, like I said, listening to him and 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 just he, him just describing how much he's, you know, interested in just going down this path, like <clears throat> it made a lot of sense. And really, I think for those that can get behind this brand, it's really getting behind the watchmaker themselves and kind of what their vision is. So it, it made a lot more sense to me, Jonathan. Now after hearing yeah. it, but like I said, reading but the article, I don't get much out of it. Yeah, but uh, but uh, maybe that, that is an example for you how wrong you are when you're saying, oh, does that make a, a watch more accurate or what what is the uh, the, the 
the real life benefit out of it. I think Lederer is a prime example uh, of what how crazy German people can be. So he understands uh, a, a, a thing that fascinates him. Yeah. And he but but he knows the weaknesses. And yeah. he's working and working and working to root out those weaknesses that he sees. He doesn't care if the watch is a tenth of a second more precise than previously. He wants to er eradicate the, the problems, the flaws that he sees. And I think that is the core of what he's doing. What do you think, Nikki, baby? Sorry, there's some uh, background noise. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, it seems like... You know, that's kind of like the definition of a genius. You know, these people that go down some weird rabbit hole of something that's not too important, but it's important. On, like, it's not really important to 99% of people, but there's a small niche where it is. And uh, clearly he has the knowledge to uh, expand and build off that. So I was blown away by his uh, knowledge and uh, just his ability to simplify these concepts, to be completely honest. He can really simplify it. And I think, um, so I hope, Nick, that that you're cutting out that interview. I would love to have that on, on my channel. If you don't want it, I will respect that. But no, I think I, you, Peggy, you can use whatever. I'm never going to strike you. So. Yeah, so, so but uh, but you should do that also on, on your channel. And I think you know what there I'll is do? I'll edit it and make it just the uh, interview with him exactly. where it's like an hour and cut it out. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah, and repost it. That's exactly yes I, mean, I, wanna, I, I want to i want to respond to the accusation here in the chat by both higgins and whole milk that i was i said i was wrong i never said <laughs> I was wrong i never said i was wrong i said i understand more now like because like i said the monochrome article you don't really get why this guy is doing what he's doing with his manufacturer but listening to the interview it's just a really passionate individual who has yeah. gone the lengths of the earth you know to find out you know different ways of building movements and whatnot so Really, really cool interview. Like I said, I, I would definitely recommend everyone checking out if you hadn't seen it. But, but the, in my opinion, there are two dimensions. The first dimension is if you if you have a look at the, his watch, this is his personality. If you turn it around, this thing is transparent. It's open. He says, I have nothing to hide. I make it as good as possible and and approach it from all angles. And if you have doubts or questions, ask me. That case bag is mind blowing, isn't it, Nick? Have you ever seen something oh my like that? No, 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 no. Hey, Neo, by the way. Yeah, no, I've never seen anything like that. It was, uh, I mean, I've seen some crazy movements, but that was actually very, very impressive. And he did say that he he did uh, shorten the escapement for when he changed his size down to the 30 line, 39 mil. He did modify the movement yep. there, uh, Higgins, as yep. well. Yep. So it I mean, like it's not an easy task. I, I haven't calculated how, how many percents uh, is uh, reducing 44 to 39. Uh, I think it's 10 percent. Is it 10 percent? Mm, it's a little, a little more than 10. 10. That would be a smidge over 10, but less than 15. Yeah. But it's a big fucking deal because you have a oh, super yeah. complicated movement uh, that is filling out a 44 millimeter case. You're making it five millimeters smaller on all uh, uh, on all aspects, and it still works. I mean that that is something really admirable, and that that also um, uh, speaks to himself. Uh, we, we've been talking about uh, many watchmakers not being able to make attractive watches, and he learned yeah. from that. He started with 44 millimeters. Probably he, he learned that it's just too big and he didn't yeah. let go uh, until it's too small. I think somebody criticized also the, the blunt uh, dials. I think it was you, Tan, or was, was me, it yeah. OC? Well, it was both of us. <laughs> well, it was both of us, I think, that yeah. said that. Yeah, but, I think both uh, of us said that. Yeah. So so maybe maybe he has to work on that. But then the that invert that he showed uh, it's just mind blowing, and if if you really complain about the dial, just get the the invert, which is which is uh, even more mind blowing. Yeah, I think the dial is definitely a a weak point of that watch. But look, that kind of stuff will get better in time. I think with yeah. any manufacturer, I think for him, you could kind of see where he was coming from, like a really humble guy, and you know he he's just trying to put out his product the way he wants to put out his product, which I I do really respect. So yeah, super exciting guys. Like that was a and, and and Higgins. By the way, I told uh, Nick on his channel that the the, the holy trinity of uh, up and coming independence is Raul Pagesh, Rex Rashepi, and Liderer. And he's got one of the three so far in an interview. So you need to get him in front of Rashepi, and then you need to get him in front of Raul. He need he'll need to get himself in front of Raul Pagesh. You need to help him with the Rashepi. I think if you can. Chance with Rex Heppi, or Rex Hep, Rex Heppi. There's a chance. 
I, I think there's a chance, but mm. uh, yeah, we'll see. I think I there, there is there is also way. another lesson to be learned or another dimension. I mean, uh, I've been insignificant with the Swiss and John channel now for three years, and people shake their heads uh, about uh, black polished and balanced cock talk, and uh, people don't really understand why we are doing that, what we are doing, and uh, they are mocking on us. But such an interview just shows uh, that that there are crazy crazy people out there who are even crazier than us. And that it can be fun and entertaining just to broaden your horizon. I mean, Nick, you didn't even know the brand, and I think you you uh, you you learned a lot about uh, the brand, about the man, and about his watches today. I was and most that... impressed, with the man. Honestly, like I think just like how impressive he was just told me a lot yeah. about the brand. To be completely honest, yeah. Like your, so your, your, his viewers like doubled. Like this when the interview was on, his viewers doubled. Yeah. Yeah. They had like 20 or 30 and it went up to like mid fifties, I think. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. so yeah, I think uh, there is a lot uh, to be learned and that also encouraged me uh, to carry on with this niche channel, which nobody is really interested in and uh, <laughs> nobody understands what we are doing here. Uh, but highlights like that um, give a little bit of life into the, the theoretical part. And I think we, we can also show uh, by asking such a guy like like Bernhard Lederer that this is not about elitism. I mean, the, the, the watches are bloody expensive, but it has nothing to do with looking down on others. It is just following a passion. Yeah, well stated, well said. Yeah. And there's a market for the passion, Higgy. It might not be as big as, you know, a platform that's like, you know, drama or whatever, but I'm telling you, there is a market for the, for the knowledge you have and for that talk, all the big yeah. time watch people want to hear that stuff. They do, you know? Yeah. 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 So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward. I mean, I have to, a lot to learn still, uh, because for example, I still don't understand where the balance wheel from the later uh, escapement is getting its energy from. I can understand the um the uh, the slowing down the motion but i still don't get the part where that balance wheel which is still a traditional balance wheel uh is getting the energy to spin uh, right and left there must be some energy coming in i see a roller in the middle uh but i'm gonna ask uh, mr lederer that uh, the next time that we're seeing him and i'm looking forward for for his analogies because I really like that analogy. If you have a person in the middle and yes. uh, you you push him in one direction, you need another person to push him in uh, on the other side. Otherwise, he he falls down. I think that was a great analogy of yeah. uh, how how his double impulse uh, escapement is working. Yeah, it helped me understand it for sure. Yeah, it did. Like, uh, yeah. Yo, what kind of like dark streets are you going down here? <laughs> I, I have no idea where I'm going. I was wondering where you're going. Like, I was like. Is he going somewhere? Like, or is he just in the, walking, like into like the ghettos of Geneva? Like, what is he doing? Yeah, I, I don't really know where I'm. I just started making turns and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, Nick, what is the plan for tomorrow? Um, was I thought I was supposed to do, or did I forget? I thought I had an appointment. Or no, that's Saturday. I have the, uh, I think Saturday is the uh, the paddock thing. Yes, so Saturday is paddock tomorrow i don't know what i'm doing tomorrow i think maybe i'll try to go to the paddock museum but i don't think i'd be able to film there is the problem or i know i won't but um i mean yeah. when i went there like what was it eight years ago they, they didn't allow any filming but i don't know i haven't been there recently so may maybe with more people coming in for youtube and stuff they maybe allow it i don't know yeah. can i give you an advice uh nick please i need it yeah so me. i would advise you to do the paddock museum maybe in the morning and then in the <laughs> afternoon, you should you should cover the the independence, the AHCI. Um, oh, okay. That I thought we went. Was that not where I went? That wasn't no, AHCI. No, 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 no. That that was that was an even smaller event. That was not even AHCI. AHCI is around the corner. Um, so so by a lucky shot, uh, you got there. By the way, um, uh, Bernhard Lederer is also a, a member of the AHCI. I changed that title. 
good catch. Oh my god! <laughs> I got, I, you know, it's funny. I got both titles now, so I'll be able to go <laughs> the before and after. We're looking forward that, for the locks the report. Best, <laughs> the locks report title is simple. Watch Nicholas <laughs> interviews Bernard Leader, world famous watchmaker Bernard Leader, and doesn't know who he is. Simple. Yeah, so, but, Simple. but uh, yeah, you you must also do a show with uh, with Higgins pisses off Bernhard Lederer by disagreeing with him. It'll be in the show. Yeah, it'll be in the show. We got, we, got, we got Uzi in the chat saying Geneva, Switzerland. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, yeah. thanks for popping on. By the way. I appreciate the help, dude. Thank you for that. Yeah, it was it was great to to see him. I've never seen him before uh, live on camera. Was it his first time or no? No, he's been on before. before. He's been on before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Whole milk. It, Jonathan's not letting any of us talk to Sven Anderson um, right now. He, he's he's put an embargo on any of us talking to Anderson Genev until Watches and Wonders is over. <laughs> no, actually, I would love to do that, but uh, Nick, be careful uh, when when he's showing you the erotic watches. You you may want to turn your camera off. Um, yeah. See, Lucy, so, but... this would also be a good clickbait title. Bernard Lederer dunks on Higgy Baby. <laughs> that would also probably get just as many views as watch Nicholas interviews Bernard Lederer and doesn't know who he is. So I, I don't know. Like, they're both good. I have no problem with that. I mean, I, I was a little bit provocative, um, I think, but not not in an um, uh, impolite oh. way. You could tell. Like, it was just, yeah, banter, nothing like that. You could tell he didn't. Enjoyed... Yeah. You know, the, the next question that I had lined up was about black polishing, but uh, we couldn't go uh -oh. that far. And I think it, it was time uh, to, to let him go. I was losing steam, unfortunately, yeah. No, I, but my, uh, my yeah, you have to keep in mind he, he's also there to, uh, uh, to do business. Uh, yeah. Not sure how much business is coming from those interviews. And like, uh, other people are waiting there as well. What I, what I really found admirable was... That, that he told you, I saw you waiting for such a long time. I saw you texting and calling. So uh, he he recognizes everything uh, uh, even around him, uh, which also speaks for his social skills, I would say. Yeah, I would agree with that. Very it's very difficult to get a watchmaker who can really explain what he's doing. So it's not that easy. Yeah, I think that's well said. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Got an F there so tomorrow is paddock museum and ahci right that's the yeah. game plan that'll be cool it's, man well hold up what's today it's thursday right it's yes, thursday, it's thursday. Friday. Yeah. Oh, okay so we're talking sold up so saturday was paddock museum okay so or sorry uh saturday no. saturday the salon salon, oh, salon and and uh watches and wonders okay got oh my god okay so saturday the salon four o'clock tomorrow yeah. truck the uh the museum and the AHCI <laughs> and bang yeah yep so a lot to do uh so enjoy your day tomorrow on uh, on the museum uh I tried to set up a date with you from uh, four or five o'clock in the afternoon with uh, Anderson Genève and I'm pretty sure you have enough to cover uh, other than that um oh so I I'm forgot about that yes that would be great yeah that too that's perfect yeah mm -hmm. I'm excited for that also that'll be what's yeah. up yeah, if, if it's not interesting for you, I mean, uh, I don't want to be guilty to spruik uh, Anderson Genève just be, because I have one of those watches. But people I, are going to like the watch content. I think it'll be good watch content. Like, you know, people don't know a lot about the brand. They know your watch, but I think they would appreciate hearing about it. You yeah. know what I mean? You, you know what I also found out? People are but, saying watch talk is boring, uh, but it's not depends on who does it and how they do it but yeah i mean it can be made entertaining watch well, talk with an well if, if you're only ooh and eyeing then it's going to be boring i agree with you <laughs> it's true tough i mean it's simple guys like most of the watch talk that you hear is, is just regurgitations of something somebody else said like you go to any of these newer watch channels like a jenny l or whatever you know, and you look for videos, all of them have done like a Submariner video or whatever, right? Like, and it, most of it's just regurgitation of like whatever Archie has said. And Archie regurgitated what someone on the forum said, guys. It's just a lot of it's recycled content. And a lot of viewers just don't find it that interesting. At least I don't find it that interesting. And so like Nick said it right. It's how you how you approach it. You know, and certain channels approach Wash Talk in a different way and they people find it interesting. But if you make it stale, yeah, it's just going to be like the same old dribble. Yeah. So hold my guess asking Higgy, who should watch Nicholas be grooming at the AHCI event? 
Felix Baumgartner, Marco Lang, I mean, be my guest. I would love to have Felix Baumgartner from Urwerk uh, on the show. And Marco Lang is also uh, a, a very interesting person I would like to interview. Uh, by the way, uh, what, what I really would like to discuss with Mr. Lederer is something that is out of his ballpark or out of his comfort zone, uh, because people keep on asking those questions. Uh, okay, Mr. Lederer, I'm buying a 140,000 Swiss francs watch from you now. I probably live 20 years with the watch. Uh, then it goes down to the next generation. Uh, but I'm afraid that in 30 years, nobody nobody will be able to repair that watch or get spare parts. Uh, what what will be your reply to make me comfortable uh, comfortable to buy one of your watches? I think that is a very important question. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. It is it's a great question. Really great question. And you can ask that tomorrow as a default question to to everybody. There we go. I like that. I do like that, Higgy. Thank you. Very solid. Well, th that is that is the most asked questions when, when it comes to high horology and everybody is scared and uh, everybody is right. And probably those can cannot uh, give us a, a reply uh, other than keep the faith. Uh, but um, I would like to, to see if they are really thinking about this question or if they are so busy developing crazy escapements uh, that uh, they don't cover that aspect. And if they don't, Maybe such a question makes them thinking and probably taking actions, just like Marco Lang does. Marco Lang is uh, is making all technical details public, um, so that uh, in in the, in the future people can recreate parts for his watches and oh, wow. uh, get re get replacement parts. And I think that's a way to go. That's very cool. Yeah, that's so awesome. Marco Lang shows that that he thought deep in, into that question. Awesome. Very awesome. So Nick, did you have a dinner? Did you have anything to eat yet? Uh, honestly, Higgy, I, I grabbed something, but I'm really feeling great. I ate a little bit of it. I'm gonna try to <laughs> another burger. Yeah, I got another burger. It's cheap and close, but yeah, I felt a little nauseous for some reason, so I'm trying to like take it slow, you know. So are you but, taking the burger to your hotel or isn't it that good that you're throwing it away? What? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm kind of walking around I'm like a couple blocks from the hotel. I'm going to take it back and try to eat it a little bit later because I just okay. had a little, you know, I don't want to throw it out, but yeah, at least I got a little bit of food. I think I just walked around a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely you did. Yeah. It was successful though. And the next fun. couple of days will, will not be less. So walking around uh, the exhibition booth, uh, you will do a lot of miles. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely a lot of miles. But and Yeah, it's a beautiful city. It's definitely beautiful. Yeah, Geneva is fantastic. It's a little bit early in the year because uh, the Alps are closed, so I guess it's it's still pretty cold because everybody's wearing a jacket. Yeah, it's chilly for sure. It's yeah. definitely particularly in the night. Yeah, it's a little cold. It's not like freezing or anything. I would guess uh, I only I don't really know the Celsius conversion. It's probably like low fifties Fahrenheit. It's mm -hmm. Not freezing, but uh, it did get pretty cold the other night, like forties Fahrenheit. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, what I really liked is also the the guys who who treated you um, um, at uh, at Buhara. That was that was a very uh, very kind. Um, talk and uh, they gave you coke and they showed you around. Can't believe that they had a, a streamliner in blue, uh, the chronograph to try on. They're very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tam. <laughs> well, I had to show you at least the. Uh, the I was doing this. That's why I was so silent. I was just making the uh, the thumbnail. You got good thumbnail making skills, man. Yeah. <laughs> you need to get. You need to give me a better picture of the dog because. This one always fucks up. Actually, yeah. I was just just grabbing a bite and uh, gave Mrs. Higgins the the link where I interviewed Mr. Lederer, and she saw uh, some thumbnails on Elite Horology, and she was just laughing out and said, "Seems that uh, Tan has a lot of fun doing those." 
So she, at least she enjoys the. Oh, she thumbnails. saw the thumbnails. Yeah, <laughs> well, like the one with like Ross Rachel Brady with his shirt off and stuff. Like yeah, that. <laughs> you, you know that she was very, very critical. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of of you, yes. Loose Tooth make, makes a very good point. I'm pulling that up. Uh, Jonathan, I watched an old documentary where it said A C H I A H C I. It's a product, uh, correct pronunciation. Uh, have an understanding or maybe an agreement that members agree to service, maintain members' watches if something happens. I heard that. Uh, I must ask Alex um, uh, from from Anderson Genève. It's that's true. Um, I don't have an official confirmation. I I learned that from you, uh, but I haven't asked. Uh, like I keep on saying, I don't I don't want to to keep my friends busy with those kind of questions. Now that it's the busiest time of the year, um, I hope that uh, in a, in a future conversation I can bring up that point. Yeah. Well said. The first girl that helped us was super cute. On the at the uh, at that. What, what, I'm gonna at leader. Wrong again. At leaderer. Yeah. Okay. At leaderer. So. Yeah, you liked her. Yeah, she but, was awesome. She was but cool. she didn't have a a German accent. That was definitely a French accent. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> I I thought I heard her speak in. Uh, <laughs> oh well. Yeah. I mean, I definitely... you're hearing me speaking now for years. How can you confuse that with a French accent? Right? How does that even happen? You know, it doesn't yeah. sound similar. So. Boys, I got I to gotta dip real quick, so I'll leave you guys. I'll catch you guys um, in a little bit. I just got to run. Yeah, Tan, right. for, thank you very much for hopping on. I'm not sure if we are closing this uh, this down or if I'm going to bore no, you. you got another, no, you got another 15 minutes, man. You got to do the full hour. But yeah. To to be honest, I'm excited and uh, also buzzed. So I'm not sure if buzzed. Oh my god! How many? You had like one beer? What do you What do you drink? No, 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 no. <laughs> buzzed, uh, buzzed, uh, full of uh, enthusiasm because I really enjoyed that interview. Well, you're much. seeing you're seeing Geneva at night, guys. The night is young, but I do have to run. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Later. Bye, Tan. Thank, thank you very much for hopping on. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, I want to show a little bit more, but I'm actually probably like. I probably got about 10, 50, like I can hit an hour for sure, but I'm like going to die for real. Yeah, yeah. No, I Far understand enough. that. I, th I think you're also suffering jet lag. Uh, so I think I let you go as well. I'm going to cover uh, the, the data graph. Uh, if you want to join me, you're, uh, you're welcome to, to stay. Otherwise, uh, just leave. I'm presenting the data graph, um, Tourbillon, uh, Perpetual, Lumen. Uh, for five minutes, and uh, if there are no further questions, then uh, then I will go. But I will I will go through the uh, the chats right now uh, because uh, I've been ignorant to them. I apologize for that. Uh, but things like that, that happen. So we have Patrick Chris who says hello. Vimal says hello. Vimal is the guy who pointed out that there is a difference between Maldives and India of only <laughs> half an hour. That Good will on. be another uh, topic that we're going to cover. Hedera hitchhiked to London to buy a, book, a copy of George Daniel's book when he got into watchmaking. Quite the guy, exactly. That is the story that touched me most. Uh, he said that he was standing for seven hours in the rain uh, before the first car even picked them up. Uh, so that is dedication. Keep in mind that is many years ago. I think Mr. Lederer is a, a little bit older than me, but I remember the times where it was almost impossible to get uh, uh, books from the UK. Um, my books were James Bond books, and I knew I, I know how difficult it was uh, to, to get that. Lederer isn't watched. No, it's uh, Lederer. Um, so uh, Jimmy says hello. The case design is beautiful. Yes, the case back is, is, is mind blowing. Uh, Jerry Leibovitz is here. Hello, good evening. Uh, we have Mr. Squi Sky Dweller. I'm here from Marcelo and the Le Mans. Uh, well, well, not sure if you're still there, uh, but you you chose the wrong place. Scotch down under Ken. Wow, most impressive. If anybody is is really able to understand that movement in full, it's Ken because he's deep into astronomy. He his brain is uh, is able to uh, to to pick up and and um, combine all those. Uh, fancy connections that that I'm probably too old or too stupid to understand. So your help is appreciated. Uh, will OC be checking uh, in with Watchers and Wonders content? I'm not sure. I think they're on the way. Watch Lux, I th uh, yeah, 
Watch Lux uh, thinks uh, that uh, Watch Nicholas was great. And I agree, it, it was a fantastic show. And we didn't really see that coming. So Lux is here. Uh, Apes is here. Um, uh, Jonathan Quell Higgins thoughts on the Lange Odysseus Titanium one limited uh, while one limited 250. I know that Lange Odysseus uh, titanium, uh, titanium is limited. I'm not sure 250. I know that it's very difficult to get. And one policy that is really upsetting a lot of collectors is if you have received a steel Odysseus, um, you're not getting the titanium one. Or are you uh, asking about the, the chronograph? So Watchlux will uh, says he will never forget me. <laughs> Not sure if that is a good thing or a bad uh, thing. Uh, Guy Gadwa is here. Hello, good evening. Um, Holmick says his watch with Chapik last year was really nice. Uh, not sure what what he's talking about. Which which brand? Uh, that's the problem when when you read those um, uh, those comments. Too uh, too, too bad. I believe his child goes to school with uh, Xavier. Xavier is the uh, the manager of uh, of of um, Chapek, and that's how they got to collaborating. Okay, that sounds good. But I'm to to be honest, I'm not aware of a collaboration Lederer Chapek. So maybe he's talking about an, another uh, brand. So we have Patek Chris here. Hello. Um, we have Loose Tooth, um, who says it was a great interview. Thank you very much, um, Patek Chris. Anyone follow football in the chat? OC is uh, OJ is gone. Yes, I I heard that uh, OJ Simpson died, uh, just uh, I think yesterday. Tan admits he was wrong. He will never admit that. I mean that is just uh, how it goes. How is Geneva at McDonald's? Sorry, I couldn't ask that question. Probably Nick uh, replied to it. Our friend uh, Neo is here. Hello, humanity. That's uh, that's what we want. Uh, um, Neo says hello to uh, to watch Nicholas. Um, Billy Jeans, uh, Higgy baby, you really should go to Watches and Wonders next year. Uh, you never know. Uh, I've I've been saying it before. Um, Watches and Wonders. If you don't have an appointment, it's very difficult to to get on the booth. Uh, so uh, most most of the things. Uh, you do is window shopping, except you go to those independent um, exhibitions that you just seen. And that is really everything can happen. I mean, uh, nobody really expected that we're getting an interview uh, with uh, Lederer. Uh, nobody ex uh, was expecting that it would be so good. So um, Geneva and uh, watches is always a, uh, a bag full of gifts and surprises. Uh, we have Spring in Fialta here. The inventor of the hot tub was a French arms merchant called Jacques Uzi. That is information that uh, I've been missing out. And we have, who else do we have? Uh, JP C CWC, where's this interview? I, I just hopped on. I'm uh, linking it again to, to watch Nicholas and um, you can you can see that there. I think I, um, yeah, you can scroll. Uh, through the uh, the live stream, and I'm pretty sure uh, you will find it. Sirdi Danny is here. Sirdi Danny, please hop on the channel and let's have a chat. I'm posting the link here again. And um, yes, yeah, Sirdi Danny is here. Muhammad Ali, our good friend, he liked the interview as well. Glad that you liked it. I really enjoyed my time there. Um, so yeah, timestamp is is a little bit difficult. Um, it is an hour, eight hour long, um, estimated five and a half hours, I would say. Uh, there you find it. Five and a half, hour, half uh, to six hours. Um, Nicholas had to wait for, for quite some time to, uh, to, to be received. But that's, that's how it is. Okay, let's go back to the datograph. I was starting uh, by saying I admire uh, Lange for keeping the case dimensions uh, civil. Um, and uh, the datograph perpetual tourbillon um, so it is only half a millimeter bigger than the standard uh, datograph uh, but you get a lot of uh, additional functions now i'm totally fascinated with the watch i love those lumens i think there is also a loom shot here you can see the the loom shot uh, so the the amount of 
what's happening is is really mind mind blowing. Now here comes the negative, and you you guys know that uh, that I'm a big uh, big Lange fan. Um, as far as I know, the last price for the Datograph Tourbillon um, Perpetual was around three hundred thousand US dollars. Now it's over six hundred fifty, and that is just because it's a it's a lumen, and they had a couple of price hikes. I find it problematic that Lange is is really getting that crazy. From what I hear, is those complicated watches are sold out. Uh, they are having difficulties to supply. Um, so it is understandable that uh, that Lange um, is, how do you say, is is doing the allocation process a little bit by price. However, it is greedy, and I think the duty of an honest producer of goods should be to provide value to your clients. And if you charge your clients over double just to have a semi-transparent um, dial and some loom highlights on the dial and the sub dials it's not really it it doesn't look good for you as a producer no matter if you can take that money or not um i think it has it has to do with honesty or very difficult to say i, I just have a bad feeling that they're cashing in so much Probably the influence from Richemont is so high. Um, I've seen uh, Wilhelm Schmidt, the CEO of Lange, doing a lot of interviews. I don't know what kind of pressure he is, uh, he's under. I'm not sure if it's his idea or if, he, if it's uh, the pressure from Richemont, uh, but I really don't, don't like the pricing. I like the details, including the moon face that is loomed. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. Um, so a premium is certainly justified, but not more than double keep in mind the base price or, or the base model is still a perpetual pe calendar uh, data graph with a tourbillon and we're talking here about visual modifications all the technology uh, remains the same there is no change there's no upgrade not that any upgrade is really necessary the movement finishing is top notch the movement construction is top notch so that is that is uh, not an issue um, but it's technically the same um, watch with a little bit of makeup and it's getting ridiculous. Okay, that is uh, for tonight. We have 57 minutes. We are still having 26 viewers unless somebody wants to join me on the panel. I'm really talked out because I was spending six hours with uh, Watch Nicholas and uh, interviewing Bernhard Lederer. Uh, I'm tired. I'm, uh, I'm talked out. So that is, um, Zeppi is here in the chat, how thick it is. Um, I forgot 14.6 millimeters. So it is 41.5 and 14.6 millimeters. I think it's still okay and reasonable. Let me check the normal datograph. Uh, it's 13.1. Uh, so it's a little bit more than a millimeter thicker. Um, uh, contrary to, for example, the triple, uh, triple split or double split, those are really much bigger than a normal datograph and much thicker as well. So um, yeah, uh, that is why I like that uh, datograph uh, perpetual tourbillon, uh, not so much the price. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It helps uh, the channel with the algorithm. Um, we, we are building up viewing hours. We are trying to cover as much as possible from Geneva. To be honest, the, the news from today uh, are not really exciting. I know that we have a lot of uh, of uh, releases that we haven't talked in detail. So we have great content uh, for the weeks to come. Uh, thank you very much for watching the show. See you another day. Bye-bye.